Hello there guys, my name is Coach Shad Donkstable on Bot Built for Theme Park News and welcome to a massive, massive Theme Park Newsroom update. This is from Phantasialand. We haven't done a Phantasialand news update in quite some time. Now, you remember me, I've reported on this um, fly in Rookburg area before. We've actually shown you January 2019 construction footage from a German follower. Uh, who sent us in some construction footage right, you know, it's nearly a year ago now since that was. Um, so, again, thank you very much to whoever sent that footage and you know who you are. Um, so we've, we've followed this area before, but we haven't had, like, specific details on the shops, the restaurants, anything about the hotel. We just got the name of the hotel. And, of course, like we said, we've got the details about Fly as well. Now... From an issue of the Rookberg Gazette, uh, which is like the this fake news source that's part of the area, um, even to the smallest detail, we've got details on the Rookberg area and the whole culture of Rookberg and sort of what's in the the town and things like that, the whole theme around the town and things like that. So. We've got a lot of stuff, and like I said, this is going to be a massive news update because I'm going to be sharing you all the concept art. Then I'm going to be sharing with you all the details uh, about Rookbur and at Fantasyland. So, uh, like we said, we don't have a confirmed opening date for this, but it's expected very much to open next year in 2020. So, I'm really excited for this to open. I think with construction going on and with it all looking, you know, nearly finished, I, th I think I think 2020 is a reasonable guess. I think we're looking at a spring summer opening. Uh, for this new uh, project. This project's been going on for a good good few years now. Um, so I think Fantasyland, hope, I, 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 the reason why I'm really excited about this and the reason why I'm not that mad that it took a few years to sort of re it all finish off and stuff like that, the reason why I'm not mad is because I know Fantasyland likes to do things to the minimum of detail. So you know, I want to see them do it to the maximum amount of details possible, right down to the most minimum of details, make it look maximum quality. Uh, so, let's get on then about the details, all the confirmed details now from this Gazette article about Rookba, uh, which is a brand new area. Now, first thing we're going to be talking about is the theme of the area. Now, the theme of the area is an interesting one. Now, you can already see on your screen, concept series for the Rookba. And basically, the theme of this area uh, is an up-and-coming industrial city uh, that's not far from the metropolis of Berlin and will also be accessible from the Berlin-themed area of the same name in Fantasyland. So, Berlin, if you didn't know already in the park, is mainly children's rides, it's mainly a family area, but themed around 1920s uh, Berlin, Germany. So, uh, basically... Uh, in the midst of a mighty panorama full of towering brick walls, black coal depots and red smoking chimneys, bustle can be observed. White steam rises from the winding streets. Very interesting stuff there. So, um, you know, it's giving us a real full detailed description here um, on what the whole area consists of. Um, so... You know, like I said, I'm really excited about this. I, I'm really excited. Uh, I can't believe the detail that's gone into this. Uh, the city is shaped by the Rookba Air Rail Company, which has a large factory site on the outskirts of the city uh, and provides employment for countless hard-working workers. The revolutionary company is largely responsible for the development of Fly, a unique aircraft that circles high above the city. And, of course... All those coaster enthusiasts know that is the main attraction in the area. That is the Vacoma Flying Roller Coaster at the park, which I'll get on in, in more detail about in a little bit. Uh, visitors come from, from coming from the Berlin area, which I said is the children's rides, uh, themed around the 20s uh, Berlin, enter the industrial city through the new Rookba Underground Station. So this is a new thing they're constructing. Every step through this tunnel shall make the new emerging world of Rookburn more noticeable until you are finally standing in the middle of high brick walls. A fine Mosaic adorns the entrance of the large underground station. I think it says Mosaic, Mosaic, uh, something like that. I think the ice is silent, but that's how it's pronounced. So 
it's got this nice open feel to it. As soon as you step out of the underground station out of the Berlin area where all the children rides are and you step into Rukba, uh, I'm guessing they are going to have, I think with the hotel sort of close to the edge of the boards of the park, I think they're going to have like a separate entrance to the hotel maybe. I mean that's not confirmed yet but I would think they have a separate entrance to the hotel or you might have to walk literally through the park to get to the hotel. I mean I don't know how the hotel path works yet so we'll have to double check with that one. Uh, but let's go on then about the theme and the whole story around the main attraction in the area, and that is Fly. Fly, it's your Vacoma flying roller coaster. Uh, it's been in the pipelines for a couple of years now. Um, test, uh, just testing it at the factory, constructing the ride, uh, getting the layout all sorted. We saw that. Uh, for those of you who didn't see it, Fantasia released like a, a teaser video, I guess. Um, to sort of describe the ride and things like that, so uh, you know, I, I, it, it's just been an absolutely incredible uh, thing to see. Um, now, Fly is a visionary means of transport for demanding and adventurous astronauts, with with, with which the air travellers race around across the streets and squares of Rukba. Sharply past the brick facade of the factories and through the Hotel Charles Lindbergh, which I'll talk about in a little bit, departures only take place from the central station Rookbur, so I'm guessing that's the whole name of the station for the ride. In addition to the numerous near-miss effects, we give the passengers the feeling of colliding with the high facades of industrial plants. The flight through the Hotel Charles Lindbergh is a unique experience worldwide. I hissed past hotel guests so close that I could almost touch her right as a test pilot for the Gazette. So one of the test pilots has actually done a themed statement to describe the experience. That's how much detail, this is like Poulton's Park here in the UK kind of detail. They go right to the wire with the detail on this area and the whole coaster experience. But flight is not the only experience for passengers who race towards countless walls. Um, in order to turn them off at the last minute and complete daring flight manoeuvres. Because even guests who do not ride can have fun watching the long winding track disappear in buildings, suddenly reappear in front of them and spiral through the city of Rukba. So basically you're going to get an off and on ride experience that's absolutely worth it. Uh, Fantage Land has been a bucket list theme park for years now, you guys know what I mean. Uh, I've been a fan of this park ever since Black Mamba was created, and then since then it's created some fantastic attractions. Uh, Chapas is, is an amazing looking log flume. Taron could be one of the best coasters in the world, could be the best coaster in Europe if I went on it, uh, over in Germany. And of course you've got this huge project going down now, so... Um, you know, it's it's unbelievable how much they've invested, especially, you know, I think this last decade for Fantasyland has been a very successful one, especially with Chapas and Tarim, and, and of course, heading into the next decade, you've got Fly, and they're sort of the main draws in terms of new attractions for this decade for Fantasyland, so, uh, you know, they've done a really cool job this last 10 years, like investing in new stuff, uh, upgrading things, you know, keeping everything fresh and updated, um, now, novel flight seats make it possible for guests to take a seat in the normal seated position on the train for flight and to be tilted only after entering the line position. As a result, the Rukba Aerial Company promises freedom like never before, and there's actually a statement uh, that the Get Gazette describes the long journey. So, make sure you take this on board because this could be your experience. With a catapult-like launch, the air travellers rush up and screw themselves through Rukba. Just a moment later in high air, they rush past the towering factory walls, booming turbines and the rooms and balconies of the Hotel Charles Lindbergh, in order to finally feel the maximum intensity of the flight experienced in another launch. So, I mean, that just sounds wicked, doesn't it? <laughs> it's a completely new experience and it's a completely new... Um, different addition to the coastal lineup of Fantage Land. It's a completely new roundup experience. It's fantastic. That's Fly then. So we do know that it's going to open with the area. We do know it's manufactured by Vacoma. Uh, of course, Vacoma have been in the business uh, for a long time now, but only recently, in the last few years, they've introduced some uh, new concepts and like new generation track to keep their company firing, keep their company updated. And you know what, the new track, the new generation track for their new concepts, for other rides, you know, they've done like the suspended family coasters. 
uh, with like the new gen track. I know they've done like new concepts like the Space Wall, the Bermuda Blitz, um, obviously the Child Diva Coma Hyper animation along with the Intamin version for Energylandia before they chose the, the Intamin for Hyperion. Um, you know, and the, and the Vico even though the Vacoma one didn't get chosen, the Vacoma one still looked fantastic. So, you know, you know, Vacoma are really, really on the up, and I would expect more of these new concepts to come to Europe, the UK. Obviously, things like the Top Gun launch coaster and things like that. You know, those kind of concepts are still yet to experience here in Europe. Uh, and we know the the Shockwave is going to be coming to Energylandia next year with Abyssus in the new Aqualantis themed area. That's a bucket list coaster for me because it looks fantastic on the animation. It looks fantastic with the new concept arts for Aqualantis and Energylandia is on the rise again. Uh, so Vacoma are really up in their game in the last few, especially in the last few years. Vacoma have really upped their game in the industry. And this is just another prime example of them possibly upping their game in the industry that little bit further. And who knows, maybe we'll see more of Vacoma flying coasters. Um, I think with how long Fly Tuts construct, however, it might put parks off. But I think that's because Fantasyland are putting the big level of detail of theming in there. Uh, other parks may not have as much theming as Fantasyland are doing with theirs. Uh, so they may still invest in their flying coaster. Moving on then to the accommodation, the brand new accommodation in the area. It is Hotel Charles Lindbergh. So if you want to feel the atmosphere of Rockburg for a day, then you can stop off at the Hotel Charles Lindbergh in the future. The third adventure hotel of the Fantage Land will rise impressively in the middle of the rough industrial city and promises cosy nights in real aviation cabins. The special thing is the interaction with Fly, which I talked about earlier. The flying launch coaster um, will always fly through the hotel in close proximity to the guests and thus enable a unique encounter worldwide. I mean, if you're staying at this hotel, you're going to get some fantastic shots from that balcony, aren't you? Um, from almost every position in the hotel, you'll see the fascinating aircraft whizzing past. For example, in the front of the rooms, or on the roof terrace, as close as nowhere else in Rookburgh. That's an impressive statement. The fact that you are nowhere near the rest of Rukba and you're still going to see this coaster whizzing past. Uh, it's just a fantastic experience. And like I said, if you're if you're staying in a room with that balcony near the coaster, you're going to get some fantastic shots from that balcony and it's a perfect photo point. Um, so the Hotel Charles Limbo, if you didn't know already, has a total of 106 rooms, uh, which is spread across five labyrinth-looking parts of the building with up to six floors, so very nice indeed. They are distributed like the fingers of one hand, and in the heart of Rookburt, partly connected to each other by bridges, which ensures a striking exterior and impressive views of the city. That's a big statement as well, because you're going to get some very beautiful views. I mean, you can see on the concept tile for the hotel already, you're going to see something beautiful with this. The rooms, designed as flight cabins, are reminiscent of small capsules and each contain two single beds uh, and a private bathroom, which is fantastic. V VIP treatment. We only do VIP in Europe. Uh, <laughs> in addition, a practical cupboard, a compact table console and other furnishings that are necessary and pleasant for a pleasant stay will be accommodated in the smallest area. Hotel guests live in their rooms full of brass, metal and wood in the real cabins of pilots from Rukba, which is also evident in their interior design. You almost feel like a daring explorer amongst all the exciting photos and impressive certificates, wrote a test sleeper in the Rukba Gazette. So again, I take that statement on board. Yes, it's a themed statement from a fictional character. But I would take it on board because it's something to use as promotional material to help boost the hotel. And I think that sounds fantastic. For larger groups, 16 hotel cabins can be connected to a total of 8 rooms. That's impressive. That is impressive. In the lower area of the hotel, you've got the new restaurant called Uwerk. I think that's how it's pronounced. It spells U-H-R-W-E-R-K. I mean, it could be pronounced... Er work. It could be the silent H again. It could be a silent letter again. So it could be er work, and I'm just gonna go with that for now. Uh, will be if, will be in future invite you to a hearty meal. So a very nice sit down restaurant, uh, a proper you know sit down restaurant. Not too sure about prices yet. Uh, we'll have to double check with that one. Uh, surrounded by the red brown clicker brink walls and copy pipes, 
Guests sit here on discarded workbenches with heavy iron feet and sturdy wood on two floors and can eat handmade and hearty dishes. We love our cuisine here on Coast of Chow. <laughs> In the centre of the restaurant, an imposing and shiny gold watch will be emblazoned over a cast iron staircase, thus representing the heart of the clockwork. That sounds absolutely beautiful theming. Uh, and I can't wait to see the finished product with that. That just sounds beautiful in itself. The dishes should also convince with a twist typical of Rukba. For example, the pasta dishes are not presented as usual, but are presented in their own clockwork variation. So this is a, a real Berlin twist on classic dishes. This is fantastic sounding. So um, in addition to pasta, burgers with high quality steak and their own flavour, special poke bowls in a craft variation, and hearty potato classics. Potato classics with cleverly created dips are served. The new restaurant with a character between the workshop and the pub will be open during the day to all guests of the city Rookburg. So um, this will be like an all day hotel, uh, well, uh, an all day restaurant. Uh, kind of like roller coaster restaurant at Alton Towers. It's sort of open late at night, even when the rest of the park sort of, you know, closed for the day, etc. Uh, so that's a very nice touch uh, for the for the area. So it's, it, so I'm guessing like they'll have like beautiful like dark lighting. So when it gets dark and you go inside the restaurant, you can have some nice lighting to look outside the area with. So again, very nice. Um, the restaurant will be only open to guests of the Hotel Charles Lindbergh in the mornings and evenings with a wide range of culinary options for aeronauts. So, very nice there. One of the bar's trademarks is the Aromatic Craft Beer, which is available in addition to cocktails and other spirits in 12 different types. Drink is amazing. I've heard lots of stuff about drink in Germany and it sounds fantastic. So, this is going to be right up my street. Apart from the submarine shaped counter with several bar stores, a large pool table is also the living core of the 1919 Bar Pub Destille in the lower area of the new Adventure Hotel. So, this will be a new bar. Um, so, this again will be part of the new hotel. So, you've got the restaurant and then you've got the 1919 Bar Pub Destille. So, very nice indeed. With her chocolate and candy workshop, Emile will be a real institution in Rukba. In their candy store, guests can buy numerous delicacies. The shop will be divided into two areas, one for sweets and one for chocolate. Now, I've wanted that for so long now, at some theme park or somewhere in the world, I've wanted like, something where it's separate, like, separate parts of the shop, one for sweets, one for chocolate. That sounds fantastic. I love my chocolate, I love my Cadbury's, big up Cadbury's, uh, <laughs> big up Nestle as well, they're really good. Uh, Hershey's, I haven't actually tried a Hershey's, I'm not going to lie, I've reported on Hershey Park numerous times. I've never actually had a Hershey bar, so if I'm down at Hershey Park any time or if I see any Hershey bars out and about, I'll give it a try, you know, it's good to try new things. Um, so in the front area of the shop, there are, there are large columns full of goodies. Uh, where visitors can put together their own candy bag as they please. So that's kind of like, kind of like here we do in England with the pick and mix. You know, pick it up. You know, uh, pick as many sweets you want to a certain amount, and then a certain amount costs this much money. So, you know, I'm hoping the prices are reasonable. I, I think they are. I think Fantasia Lunch prices are pretty reasonable around the rest of the park. Uh, so I'm hoping the price will stay the same and be reasonable in this new area with the new sweet shop, etc. Um, sweets range from caramel and wine gum to licorice and foam fruits and they also work with Jelly, Babe, Jelly Belly who sells their jelly beans in the shops so um, a fictional jelly bean shop brand kind of thing that they're working with here as well so fantastic uh, the back area is I think Jelly Belly is fictional unless it's a German thing I don't know uh, I'm going to guess and say it's fictional, but I haven't seen anything that suggests it isn't. Uh, <laughs> the back area is devoted entirely to chocolate and handicraft. Guests can purchase melt-in-the-mouth chocolate bars. Ooh, this sounds like a dream. With a special reference to Rukba, which have different flavours and come from our own production. So, very much, very nice. Very in-your-house, do-it-yourself type manufacturing with the chocolate here. So, very nice. There will also be a show workshop, wow, this just gets better, 
uh, where everyone can see how chocolate is made, so kind of like the Cadbury world we have in Birmingham, uh, in Birmingham, uh, where they're in water baths, the conti machine, or the cooling spirals. So very nice there. And a small boiler house in front of the Rockbur factories. Uh, so inside a small boiler house, you've also got delicious sandwiches prepared on a large counter. Uh, hungry visitors can put together the topping of their heart's content. Grilled toppings make the sandwiches even more hearty. The sandwich shop, Zom Kolashipa, I think that's how it's pronounced, or Kolashipa, rounds off the city's gastronomic offer. One of the largest employees of Rukba is the Machina Fabrique Oleg und Sifa, which offers pumps for power operation, cutting machines and pinion gears as well as a repair shop. The tailoring and cloth shop Rudd Pfaff and Sons, or Faff and Sons, I think it's a silent P, uh, <laughs> which produces bespoke stutes. At the watchmaker H. Tat Glassute, you can find all watches from pocket watch to wall clocks to alarm clocks to watch chains, while Frederick Linsermeyers offers Prim's binoculars, binoculars for air observation, travel, and sport in his shop. The Mobilia Rungschaus Fritz von Nagel, that's what it's pronounced, provides furniture, beds, and more. And in the A and C helped hat and cleaning shop, cylinders, modern women's hats with and without veil, felt, and straw hats. Woo! There we go. So that, my friends, is Rookbert in full at Fantasyland. So you've got clothes, you've got watches. You've got a sandwich shop, you've got a restaurant, you've got a bar, both inside the hotel, you've got a sweets and chocolate shop, you've got the main coaster called Fly from Vacoma. One word, I think, to describe this. Fabulous. I'm going to comment Craig Rebel Horwood from Strictly. Fabulous, darling. That is. That just sounds like a fantastic area. Absolutely fantastic. The level of detail and the level of theming that's gone into this and the level of um you know it's kind of it's kind of like what i reacted to when polton's park and vel tornado springs and the amount of detail they went into the story the theme of the area the overall outlook how it all gels together that's the same vibes i'm feeling with that that i'm getting from rookburn here at fantasia this is like tornado springs on a million times scale for europe Fantasyland have done such an amazing job. Obviously, for the coaster enthusiasts, Fly, the Vacoma Flyer, is going to be the main highlight. But, I think it's more than that. I think it is more than that. And it's more than that because um, I feel like Fantasyland are moving in the right direction in the next decade. They're already in the right direction, but they're just moving that one step further. In fact, no, I'll take that back. With this Rutberg project, they're moving five steps ahead. This is this is honestly world-class quality sounding. And from the construction I've seen recently on the buildings, etc., uh, and finishing off the coaster and everything, this just, again, sums up my point, world-class quality. And I feel like they're going to do a brilliant job with this, and I know they're going to do a brilliant job with this, but I just can't wait to actually see the finished product I don't know whether I'm going to Germany next year. I don't think I am. Uh, but it is something I want to do in the near future. And Fantasyland is one of those parks that I want to get into that trip. Uh, to experience Fly, experience Rookbur. Maybe when I'm down there, I'll stay in the Hotel Charles Limber and have a look around to see what that looks like. Um, if I can't, then I'll just experience the whole area in itself. Because um, Fly looks to be a great coaster, to, a great coaster addition to the lineup. You know, Fantasyland's got a very wide coaster lineup, and I think that a flying coaster is something that the park needed for a while. You know, years ago we were talking about, you know, would a B&M flyer ever come to Fantasyland? But even though it's not B&M, the coma is still going to do a fantastic job with it. You know, because they've got the new generation track, they've got the new flying coaster concept, there's like an innovation on the old Flying Dutchman, and they sort of learned lessons from that, and the improvements needed from the Flying Dutchman, and sort of made them to this flying coaster. And I like how it's like the B&M one, that it sort of tilts into flying position. Uh, so they've learned from B&M with that one. I know the Flying Dutchman was like the, the thing raised and then it sort of laid down and then you sort of twist into that flying position like a Jojo roll out of the station kind of thing. Uh, I know that's what they've done with the Flying Dutchman's over in the States. So, you know, it's a real innovation on the... Um, 
on the Flying Dutchman, this new Flying Coaster concept. And with this being the first one, the first Vekoma Flying Coaster new concept in the world, I think Vantageland are using that as a, as a key to use their theming and their detail and the, the amount of work going into each themed area and the whole story of the area. They're using all those skills to the maximum and making this world's first look absolutely beautiful that makes other parts go we want that coaster if they can do that with the theming why can't we do that with the coaster as well so Fantageland really are i think the pressure is really on Fantageland here because they've got a world's first concept from vacoma and they really are uh, they're making sure they set the standard when it op when it's scheduled to open well rumored to schedule open next year and we can probably we can realistically say it'll be next year I don't think it'll be 2021 or anything further than that. I think it will be 2020 from the look of the construction site of both the area and the coaster. Um, so, overall, I'm really excited. I hope you guys are really excited as well. Thank you very much for watching this bumper episode of Theme Park Newsroom here on Coaster Chow. That's the last video of 2019. Well, filmed in 2019, as you would say. Um, we've still got a Coaster Chow review. Uh, that's, um, you know, we've got reviews, should we say, that's set to come in 2020, so make sure you stay tuned for all of them. We already had a Coast Chow review that we put on earlier. Um, that's Excalibur at Drayton Manor. We already reviewed that. We pre-recorded that video a few days ago. So make sure you go check out that review video if you haven't watched it already. But for now, guys, that is the last filmed video of 2019. I can't believe 2019 has absolutely flown by my seat of my pants. <laughs> um, but 2020 is just going to be bigger and better than ever. You know, not, there's nothing confirmed yet in terms of trips, but we are looking at so much stuff next year. Obviously, Flamingoland's opening their new 10 inversion coaster. Tornado Springs opening day, or if there's a VIP slash media day beforehand. Obviously, that's something I'm very interested in. Alton Towers opening weekend in March. That's something every enthusiast wants to go to. So I'm looking at that. Um, you know, if I, if I was to choose between that and WoW weekends in February at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, I'd choose Alton Towers just for the fact that I'd rather hold off at Blackpool Pleasure Beach until 2021 when Valhalla's back up and running uh, with its reimagined Valhalla. Uh, so I hope you would go. I hope you, Blackpool Pleasure Beach fans. Hope you understand where I'm, where I'm you know, coming from. Um, obviously, still yet to do Icon, but I think I can hold off another year for that. Uh, obviously, uh, we know that Thought Park is still yet to announce some stuff for next year. We know we're still waiting on the announcement of the confirmed details for Williams World uh, at Alton Towers uh, next year that's opening in spring. Obviously, I don't think we've seen much construction work from that yet. So, um, obviously, they're still doing some in-house work with the Wobble World attraction, turning it into the main attraction in the area. But I'd expect some rethemes to start taking place over the winter period for the Kalkakland attractions. So, uh, obviously, Chessington are opening their new mini log flume, uh, and of course, the rerouted toadies. That's another part that I've uh, still yet to do. I've never been to Chessington World of Adventures, so I'm thinking of holding off till 2021 so I can do the new Drop Tower on Ramesses Revengers site as well. So, I think I might hold off till then. Uh, so, there's a lot of parks that we're interested in. Obviously, Halloween next year is going to be big with Hello Screams Anniversary, uh, Alton Towers Scarefest, Thought Park Fright Nights, um, Journey to Hell Freak Nights is coming back, I believe. Unconfirmed, but I heard it could be coming under a new name. I, 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 maybe. I mean, I'm going to call it Journey to Hell Freak Nights for now at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Uh, so there's a lot of things going off next year. Uh, and I'll try my absolute best to see which ones I can attend. Um, because 2020 on the channel is going to be absolutely massive. We had a massive year this year, but 2020 is just going to be that little bit better. Uh, so thank you very much for watching the last video of 2019. I will see you guys in the new year in 2020. For now, guys, my name is Coach Chow. Make sure you like the video if you've loved it. Comment your thoughts and theories down below on this. And also, what is your memory of 2019 on the channel? Um, I, I can only list a few, to be perfectly honest. Um... Meeting and interviewing Morgs, that was a big, that was a big, big moment in October. Meeting and interviewing Morgs, he was a great guy. I know lots of people commented below saying he's the clickbait king, but honestly, he's such a nice guy. I've watched his content. I actually think his content's good. I'm not gonna lie, I think his content's great. Uh, it's good for his audience. Um, but meeting the guy was fantastic. Meeting the whole team, Morgs's mum, uh, Bob Martin, as they like to call him, uh, his brother. 
and the camera guy as well. Meeting him and meeting all of them uh, was fantastic. Uh, of course, back in April, we interviewed the managing director or the marketing director at York Dungeon um, about the Curse of the Witch show and trying to tease any future projects, saying they're all going to test through stuff. So that was a great interview. That was the first interview we had on the channel. Um, you know, and that was a great opportunity. Uh, seeing uh, Jeff Hordley, aka Kane Dingle, in October again, just like I did last year, and he instantly recognised me from last year. Uh, that was a dream, and you know, I said, I think, I, I think I said to him as he, uh, as we finished up talking, I said, um, you know, hopefully there's a summer of drama coming to a head, and it's like, well, oh, there's going to be a summer of explosion. Those of you who watch Emmerdale will know it was a summer of explosion, so he sent me a good teaser with that one. Um, so yeah, just just loads of great moments meeting people. Uh, obviously, Alton Towers in June was a big, big um, a plus for me. Um, that was a great visit. Um, just, 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 I could just pick out so many memories, so many memories from this year. Um, you know, for our first for our first year on the, on YouTube, it was a big year. You know, we're currently over the one thousand three hundred subscriber mark in our first year. You know, not many YouTubers can say that. Not many YouTubers can say that, especially theme park YouTubers. You know, people have got like, you know, a K or under a K in the first year. But I got 1,300 subs in the first year. I couldn't believe it. I, I still can't believe it. Um, and this channel is just going to grow. It's just going to grow and grow and grow and grow until I can do it full time. I really want to do this full time. I, just, I, I absolutely love doing this for you guys. Reports on the latest news getting out there to the opening days, following the latest construction, interviewing the industry. Obviously, we've got some big stuff next year. Obviously, IAPA European Expo is going to be coming down to London in September next year. So, you know, you, you've got to be certain that I'll try my best to get down there because uh, I know Theme Park Worldwide is going to be there and I haven't seen Sean in a few years, so it'd be great to catch up with him. Um, and obviously, meet Charlotte for the first time as well. And, of course, the best thing about the IAPA Expo is the industry, the manufacturers, the people who defy this brilliant industry, the theme park and attractions and amusement industry. You interview them, you get to know their concepts, you get to know their business, the story behind creating their business. Um, I think at the European Expo uh, last year, in, or this, this year just gone, in Gothenburg, um, I think, uh, forgive me if I'm wrong, but I think like GCI, uh, well, I think I was right, I think GCI was there. There was a few other companies from around Europe that, were, that came in as well. Um, just loads of companies. I think I think Intamin was there. I'm not too sure. I think, I think Vacoma was there. And I think Gravity Group was there. Um, so there are a few companies out there that have been to the Europe Expo. And that's a massive opportunity for us here in the UK to actually interview these guys. Uh, so, you know, 2020 is going to be an even bigger year than this year. And this year was a massive one. So... There we go. Thank you very much. My name is Coast Chai, YouTube channel, Dr. Coaster Born, Bought, Built for Theme Park News. Keep living the coast alive, and I'll see you guys in the next video very, very soon in 2020. Take care, guys. Have an awesome day.